so let's try that. You know my name already, Billy. So I own a restaurant that's called Nobelhart and Schmutzig. Um, that actually translates into English in uh, noble, hard, and filthy. <laughs> and maybe you can guess from that name, I do things maybe a little bit different. Sure, like many people who run restaurants, I, I love great food, obviously. And I love to be surrounded by people who share the same obsession with food, like me. But I'm not that kind of restaurant owner and host who wants to treat you, who wants to indulge you, who wants to spoil you. Well, actually, I want to spoil you, but in a different sense. I want to spoil you for bad food, the kind of cheap and bland food which always tastes the same and that is everywhere in this country. The kind of food that most Germans consider normal. I want to shake you up with this torque. I want to fuck with you. I want to open your eyes, and not just when you are at my table, also next time you go shopping for yourself, for your kids, or for your family. On the most basic level, I want you, I want all Germans, to rethink what food actually means. So let's talk about Lebensmittel. Lebensmittel is German and refers to food stuff, everything what you can eat. And I think this is a beautiful German word that shows exactly how we got it wrong at the time. Like many German words, Lebensmittel is made out of two nouns that start with the second part, with Mittel, which actually means a means to an end. So food is very functional for most people. And as something which has to be cheap, affordable, and makes us full. But I want to focus on the first part of the word, which is called Leben, which means actually life. Because food is not a means to an end. It is life. And I'm sure you know the Maslow's pyramid of needs. Food, drinking, along with sleep and obviously sex. And breathing is the bottom of everything, the most important level. It's the foundation, the precondition of everything else we do, everything we try to achieve, and actually and it's more important than security and shelter. Food is the center of our lives, and it touches all our senses. But we, the Germans, I think we've, we have forgotten about this. We are a very wealthy nation, but in comparison to other European countries, Germans spend a smaller percentage of their income on food. We expect food to be cheap, first and foremost, and we close our eyes to what it means when 100 grams of chicken cost 19 cents. Also, we prioritize pure availability over taste. We have come to expect seasonal products all year around. And I'm shocked sometimes what people buy you think of the pale greenhouse tomato in January? So please don't think I'm here to judge you for your personal choices, for your financial situation. I'm not going to shame you if you go to McDonald's once in a while. I'm very well aware that quality food is expensive and that not everyone can afford it. But what I want is a larger societal, political change that makes sustainable and flavorful food available for everyone, always. In the meantime, I simply want you to make informed decisions, because these decisions impact all areas of our lives. Food culture is culture. Do you know what, to me, is one of the most central indications about this terrible, st 
terrible state of German food culture? Thanks to reality TV, the word Bauer actually means farmer, is not in profession. It's an insult. It is synonymous with stupidity, the lack of education, it's being provincial and backward. It's shocking how little respect we have for people who grow and process our food. Consider also that there are not many food-related professions that pay more than minimum. Just think about the exploitation of Romanian laborers in the meat industry and tell me why would a smart, ambitious young person, maybe like you, someone with ideas and entrepreneurial spirit wants to go in a profession that is looked down on. We have so little respect for our farmers, do we even respect what's on our plate? I want farming to become the job of the future. Farming that gives us great, sustainable, flavorful, everyday products to all of us. One, I want farming to become cooler than working for a fucking startup. I want people to realize that agriculture is a form of entrepreneurial ship. One that matters to all of us. One that makes a difference. You are here to want you are here because you want to make a difference, right? And that's why we at Nobelhart and Schmutzig, we always name the people behind our ingredients. We love to celebrate them, we love to share them, and we love to share them with all of you. Not long ago, I like to give you an example, not long ago, it was common to refer to winemakers as Weinbauern, with all the bad connotations. Now, some of the winemakers are celebrated like real rock stars. People are excited to have a glass of wine produced by Claude Rougeat or Pierre Auvernois. And I would love to see one day where they say the same about the asparagus proudly produced by Rainer Gohl. And, and okay, you think, who is Rainer Gohl? Uh, I know him. Uh, he is my asparagus rock star, obviously. Do you know what else suffers when we treat food as something purely functional? The environment, the world around us. Sure, right now, no one is keeping you from buying cheap food um, at the discounter or flying twice a week from Berlin to Munich. But you need to know this. While you're saving money now, someone still has to pick up the bill later on. And do you know who that is? Our children. I don't need to tell you about climate change and the effects of all that. I'm sure you already know the effects of our lifestyle. Still, that kind of agriculture is subsidized by 6.5 billion euro a year in Germany alone. If we choose to continue this way, simply to buying the cheap as possible. We destroy the basis of our life, the ground we walk on, the air we breathe. But there's something else we lose when we support conventional agriculture. We lose the knowledge of really great food. If every potato and every cauliflower looks and tastes the same, how can we know the difference? How do we know the, between shit, average, and awesome? But now I want you to see a little experiment. I brought you something. Maybe you have noticed that Germans are obsessed with white asparagus. It is currently in season, and you've probably tried it, and, but to be honest, I think you haven't really tried it. I brought you some Spargel from our friend, from our grower, Rainer Gohl. I want you all to try it and see how different this one is from the one you know. 
And yes, that means you have to try draw unpeeled. Unlike most asparagus, it's not grown under foil. And that means it takes three to four weeks longer to be ready. It's not put after harvesting in ice. So it cannot be stored so long. In this terms means the outer layer is much softer and it's super sweet in the aroma. So please try and eat. I'm going to hear some noises, which is perfect. And this, to be honest, comes out of a quality agriculture. And you get this kind of flavor and texture only when efficiency and cutting cost is not the priority. This is the kind of agriculture that is gentle to the soil and sustainable in the long term, the kind that should not be the exception, but the norm. Here's a picture of the place where this asparagus is coming from. And here is my rock star, Rainer Gull, and maybe now he is one of yours. This brings me to my final point. For you to make an informed decision about what would you like to eat, you first need to learn about food. And this is a task which starts early on and goes all on your life. You know I'm a sommelier. And in the same way, to understand wine, you have to drink wine. And actually, you have to drink a lot. <laughs> Next time, you find yourself craving asparagus, you can ask yourself, do you want the Aldi Spargel? Or do you, do you want the one which is growing with passion for quality, with real knowledge of what it makes not just good, but great? I would be glad if you feel you have learned something today. But I want us to go further than that. I want us to become really serious about teaching children about quality and sustainable food at home and definitely at school. And think about it. Why do we have sex education at school? We need to be sure that everybody knows what's going on by the time it becomes interesting to them. And we need to know it regardless of their families have told them or not. And that's why we take children to the theater or to the museum. They might find that boring at the time, but it opens a world for them which they can enjoy, which they can enjoy later on. In my ideal scenario is that children learn about food across all subjects. In biology, they learn about plants and animals. In math, they learn about how to multiply and subtract amounts for recipes. In geography, they learn about what to grow where, about the soil, about the climate. And in history, and to be honest, this is maybe the most important part, especially nowadays, you learn about the different across times and cultures, and also about what is the same. Food helps us to connect to other people. It helps us to overcome borders and stereotypes. It allows us to recognize our shared humanity. Food is emotional. If you ever cooked for a woman or a man, you know what I mean, right? Also, that means we have to serve children good food at school. And as a parent, it should be our responsibility to demand that schools and their caterers use school lunches as an opportunity to teach children healthy, quality food. They need to learn about what good food tastes like, to make an informed decision about because taste is such a good indicator for quality. And maybe you find 
that I'm making some steep, snobbish demands by talking to you about quality and being willing to pay a lot for your food. But I think, in a way, my demands are quite humble. I want us to recognize and respect the true importance of food. Because again, our relationship to food has an impact on everything else. It tells us about our values as a society, about the importance of pleasure and self-care, about the job we consider worthwhile, about our care for the environment, about the world we want to pass on our children. And that's why I keep talking about empowering people to make informed decisions. Because these decisions touch the basis of our existence and impact everything else. Now, it is great if more and more people do make some good decisions. But what really needs to happen is that this moves to the center of politics. All political parties are devoted to keep up an incredible standard of engineering and technology, especially in Germany. Yet no one talks about bringing the same precision to quality and food. But really, tell me, because I really don't get that. Why should cars be more important than the foundation of our existence? And this has to change. It has to change so that quality produce is not a luxury, but something everyone can afford and enjoy, regardless of income and social status. So, if you want to go after this, Tonight's Friday, right? To eat a Döner or a Currywurst, by all means, please go ahead. And to be honest, I do this sometimes as well. But I have a little challenge for you. Take your partner, your lover, your special friend. <laughs> We all have them, right? And take them to one of these Döners or Currywurst places and kiss them with tongues. <laughs> and then a few days later, you're going to have dinner at Nobelhart and Schmutzig and kiss them after one of our dinners. And you will see it will be different and what happens afterwards as well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>